It seems like we're done with this Find an Artifact by ID API endpoint. Not quite. Before we wrap up this feature, let's do some integration testing. That will help us find some bugs. Integration testing combines the controller, service, repository, and the database to test them as a whole. Recall that there is an in-memory relational database for development purposes called H2. We included this dependency when we first created this Spring Boot project. Let's create some testing data and insert them into this development database. Let's create a class under system package. Its name is db data initializer. Let this class implement command line runner. This interface is from org.springframework.boot. Any class that implements this interface needs to implement a run method. This run method gets called when the Spring Boot is started. So it makes perfect sense to insert the testing data here because we want to have some testing data ready at the outset before a client calls the API endpoints. Inside this run method, let's create six artifacts and three wizards. To save you some time, I have already copied the code snippet. Let me paste them here. And by the way, you can find all the information from the API documentation, the six artifacts and the three wizards. Next, let me make sure I import the classes. Recall the bi-directional relationship between artifact and a wizard. An artifact is owned by at most one wizard, and a wizard can have zero or more artifacts. Next, let's assign artifacts to wizards. Wizard1.add artifact a1 and a3. We're assigning the deluminator and elder wand to Albus Dumbledore. For Harry Potter, we're going to assign A2, which is the invisibility cloak, and A4, which is the marauder's map. In the end, in the end, for Neville, we're going to assign the Sword of Gryffindor, which is A5, to him. As you can see, the compiler is complaining because we haven't implemented this method, add artifact. So let's go ahead and create this method in wizard class. Let me change it to just artifact. When we invoke the add artifact method, two things will happen. Number one, we should set the owner of the artifact to the current wizard. Number two, we should add this artifact to this wizard's artifacts field, because every wizard has a field called artifacts that keeps track of all the artifacts this wizard owns. So here is the field. So first, artifact dot set owner to this 
Next, this dot artifacts dot add this artifact. By executing line 52 and 53, this bidirectional relationship between an artifact and a wizard is established. As you can see, the arrows are gone. Next, how do we save the artifacts and wizards or insert them into a relational database like H2 thanks to Spring Data GPA? It will help map Java object models to relational data models using a technique called Object Relational Mapping or ORM. All the magic is hidden behind a method in a repository called save. Next, let's inject artifact repository and wizard repository into this class. And here, we're going to use the constructor to inject the two repositories in this class. Select all of them, and OK. We haven't defined the wizard repository, but you know it's pretty easy. So let's go to the wizard package. Right now, there's only one class under this package. Right click. Let's create a new interface. Optionally, you can annotate this interface using at repository, but this is optional. The important thing here is have this interface extends JPA repository. Then we're going to pass two generics. The first one is the type of the domain model, which in this case is wizard. The second generic is the type of the ID of wizard. In this case is integer. And that's it. Let me make sure we import this in this class. OK. you probably want to invoke artifact repository.save six times because we have six artifacts and invoke wizard repository.save three times because we have three wizards. However, do you still remember something called cascade type? And we make the type equal to persist and merge. That is in the wizard class. It's right here, line 20. This one means if I save one wizard in the database using wizard repository, then all the artifacts associated with this wizard will be saved as well. So that means we only need to save the wizards. As a side note, Spring Data GPA is using Hibernate to implement ORM. wizard repository dot save wizard one which is albus then copy paste we're going to save w2 which is harry porter and w3 who is neville longbottom however we still have to use artifact repository to save one artifact that is artifact number six resurrection stone because we haven't assigned this artifact to any wizard. So we have to save it separately. Artifact repository dot save artifact six. Okay. 
To make sure Spring picks up this DB data initializer, we need to annotate this class using add component. Now Spring Boot will treat this DB data initializer as a bean, and it will manage the life cycle of this object. Is this class the all-in bean? Of course not. The controller, service, and the repository, they are all beans due to the annotations we added to them. OK, now let's launch the project. Let's find the main application class and click this main method. Run Hogwarts Artifacts Online. OK, we got a problem here. And it is our best friend, null pointer exception. It says, cannot invoke java.u2.list.add because this.artifacts is null. OK. So here is the mistake. Let's go to wizards. Ah, it's right here. Line 21. When an instance of wizard is created, by default, the field artifacts is null. So we cannot add artifact to a null list. How to fix this is simple. Let's simply just create a new array list. Okay, so make sure that on line 22, artifacts assignment operator new array list to make sure that it starts with an empty list. Otherwise, you will get MPE. Okay, this is very good. Next, let's launch it again. Okay, no problem. It's starting on port 8080. When I introduced H2, I mentioned H2 provides a simple console that lets us access the SQL database using a browser interface. Let's take a look. To access H2 console, here is the address. Localhost 8080 slash H2 console. As you can see, H2 database is asking us to log in. And here is the JDBC URL and username and password. Let's try to connect. It says, database not found. Let's go back to IntelliJ and see if we can find some information. As you can see, when we start a Spring Boot project, there are many messages or logs that are printed. So if we scroll up, you will find that right here. OK, h2 console available at slash h2 dash console. We know this. So we're using localhost 8080 slash h2 dash console. No problem. Database is available at. So this is the correct value. Let's copy this. and toggle over to Chrome. So that's the URL. Copy, paste. And then let's click Connect. Now this time, it lets us in. As you can see, at this moment, two tables are created, artifact and a wizard. But have you written any SQL, like create table? No, we simply defined two Java classes, artifact and wizard, and use annotations like add entity, add ID, add one to many, add many to one. That's it. It is Hibernate, the hero behind Spring Data GPA, that helps us convert Java classes and objects into tables and records. So let's take a look at the schema, artifact and the schema wizard. As you can see here, we have ID, description, image URL, name, 
And what is this? That's a foreign key that points to this table. And this table only has two columns, ID and name. Remember, we just insert six artifacts and three wizards. Are they there? Let's write some SQL. But there is a shortcut. If you click the name of the table, SQL automatically shows up. Select asterisk from artifact. If you click run, it shows the six artifacts. It also shows the foreign keys. If you remember, number one is Albus Dumbledore, number two is Harry Potter, number three is Neville Longbottom, and the last one, Resurrection Stone, has no owner. That's why this is null. So, in summary, using Spring Data JPA and H2 Embedded Database really speed up our development. It increases the productivity. You don't have to mess up installing. MySQL or Postgres during development. But I want to warn you that do not use H2 database for production. This is only for development purpose. When we move to production, we should remove H2 from our Spring Boot project. It is only used for development.